Hey there, fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and I'm back this week with another product review. Today we're looking at Core Watercolors. Stick around. So Core Watercolors are golden paints entry into sort of the watercolor market. They're a unique product, a little bit different than, than what you might expect out of a traditional watercolor due to a variety of properties. Uh, most importantly is a different binder than the standard gum, arabic, honey, or glycerin that most other watercolors use. Like all other watercolor uh, brands, or most other watercolor brands, they come in both tubes and pans. I don't have any of the pans around because I almost exclusively use watercolors in tubes. Uh, but they are available in both, although there are more colors available in the tubes than the pans, respectively, as also most brands. So as I just mentioned, the binder for Core, again, that's Core with a Q, pronounced like a C, um, it's not standard. It's something that, uh, that is referred to as Aquazol. It is actually a conservator's medium that Golden adopted into their uh, process to create a watercolor that behaves a little differently, uh, but it's still quite fantastic. Core watercolors are highly pigmented and very, very vibrant. As you expect with any watercolor, it mixes with other brands perfectly fine. You don't have to really worry about that. And I've also noticed that a little bit of this paint tends to go kind of a long way. Uh, there's other watercolors I use that uh, definitely you, you kind of reach back for more paint and more paint. Uh, you tend to need to do that a little bit less with these. Core also has a fairly decent range of uh, uh, different grounds. Uh, to take watercolors off of paper and onto other, uh, other, other supports, such as wood or canvas. There's also a handful of mediums, such as just the regular Aquazol they call watercolor medium. I also really love this synthetic Oxgall, really helps for wetting. Now, I've had a couple of tubes at the core for a while. Uh, I've used them for different projects, but I wanted to kind of really tackle something more traditional watercolor-centric, uh, I guess. So I decided to do this little uh, still life with a couple of gourds. Uh, I want to apologize uh, in, in retrospect for this because uh, not only am I severely out of practice for still life uh, work, I, uh, the shapes and things and gourds are really strange. And the paper that I was using for these demos is not great paper. Uh, probably going to be a review on that stuff coming up soon. Uh, not, a, not a favorable one either. Uh, the, the paper itself is uh, it's cold pressed, but it's way rougher than what I'm used to. Uh, did not absorb and, and work with the paint super well, and it just made the whole experience a little bit more taxing than it sh probably should have been. Uh, and it doesn't actually give the best representation of what these paints can do on a much smoother paper and much higher quality paper as well. That said, uh, I did find that uh, in working with these paints, and something I do every time, I use a couple of drops of this synthetic ox gall in my water to help with wetting capabilities, as well as uh, I put a little bit of the watercolor medium off the side, which you are probably seeing me grab here and there in, in, in this time lapse. Uh, generally, I mean, I, I didn't notice it any huge difference. I mean, I was reaching for a few more colors uh, from my other watercolor sets. I have <coughs> some Utrecht colors. I have a, a Sennelier, or Sennelier, I think is how you pronounce that, as well as a, uh, a couple of Daniel Smith colors. I did find myself reaching for those colors more, but just because I have a wider variety of those. Uh, of course, uh, in this, you're seeing my core colors on the left side of the palette, and the, uh, the regular, <coughs> my other colors are on the top, bottom, and right side. There's also a white gouache in there from Windsor & Newton as well, which I'm mostly grabbing as a tinting color. So this little still life took about an hour to do, and after that, I wanted to uh, take these colors and what was left on my palette and just do a big washy area of color on a separate page. Uh, that's something a lot closer to what I'm doing uh, with my watercolors on a regular basis. I'm not usually using them for a more uh, detailed illustration. Uh, and what I found is that the core colors in particular tend to tack up a little bit more and, and start to draw even on my palette over the course of that hour. Uh, it was actually quite interesting. I don't think I've really noticed that because I haven't really sat with my watercolors open that long for, for a particular project, because I'm always grabbing them and, and doing those quick washes with them. Uh, but while my other colors tend, tend to stay wet and workable, the core ones after that first hour really started to tack up, which I found to be a little bit surprising. Now another test I did, which uh, is something that I think is really important to bring up, especially before we even get to the pros and cons here, uh, is that the core watercolors tend to have a harder time reactivating. 
Uh, for this reason, I think a lot of people that buy the little pan sets tend to be really disappointed with them, specifically because you tend to have to let the water sit on the paint a little bit more. Uh, it's not as easy to quickly uh, reactivate. Uh, for this particular example, I have uh, some wet examples of the, uh, my three different brands on the uh, bottom and some dry examples on the top. Uh, on the right hand side we have the core. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, wet, uh, the wet one applies perfectly fine, while the dry one, uh, I, I'm just letting the water sit on it as I go back to the other paints. Uh, the Daniel Smith, uh, which is the blue one, sort of a deep blue, uh, wet and dry, uh, perfect every time, and the uh, Sennelier, uh, exactly the same. Um, now, after I finish that, I tend to, then I go back to the yellow, and after that, at that point in time, it's starting to reactivate, although it's still sitting a little bit much. Uh, I tend to, if I'm sort of reworking dry core colors, I tend to just put some water on it, go do something else, and come back, usually like five minutes later, because by, by then I know uh, the, the water has seeped in and, and has reactivated the color. So it can be uh, a little bit challenging, uh, especially if you're looking for a pan set and working on the go, and you don't necessarily have that five minutes to spend to sit and let the paint reactivate. Kind of a bummer on that side. Okay, so all that said, let's have a look at our pros and cons for this. So on the good side of things, again, this is superior, highly pigmented paint. Uh, it's fantastic. I, I would say with the exception of maybe um, the Daniel Smiths in terms of vibrancy, I've pretty much haven't seen any other watercolor that really kind of matches that level of punch that you get out of these paints. As I mentioned before, it works well with other brands. You don't have to worry about any problems intermixing between different brands or having any hiccups there. These paints are really great as well for doing big washes of color, specifically when they're still wet, coming straight out of the tube. They're probably one of the better paints out of the tube that I've had uh, compared to some others. But again, rewetting and, and things change that a little bit. But at, like straight out of the tube, they're they're really great paints. And while I mentioned about the dry time earlier, uh, part of the fact that they are tacking up a little bit faster means that they're going to be way more durable. Uh, Golden actually recommends themselves that you can actually varnish these uh, kind of watercolors, and that seems weird. Uh, obviously, with a spray varnish, not a uh, uh, a brush varnish because you would just smear the paint regardless. Uh, but they're, they, they, they can be uh, used in a lot more mixed media applications that way, uh, which I find to be uh, actually kind of valuable for a lot of the work that I do. On the downside though, eh, sorry Golden, uh, these are quirky paints. They're, one, the tubes are smaller actually. Uh, doesn't seem like a ton, but these are 11 mil tubes where the standard watercolor tube is 14 mils. Uh, so you're getting a little bit less paint for actually a little bit more money. Uh, they're not horribly priced, but I feel like they could be a little cheaper. The paints themselves, and this I think is probably something to do with the binder, uh, they have sort of this weird sticky resinousness to them. Uh, especially when you first open a cap, a lot of times you're getting this big trail and string of paint that's just like, Ugh. Uh, it, I'm not really sure why that happens. Again, it's probably a, some behavior of, of the binder to the paint, but uh, it's, it's just very odd. As I also mentioned before, uh, these paints can be harder to reactivate. Uh, you really have to let water sit on them a little bit longer, which uh, for some people I think can be a deal breaker. Also, as I mentioned before, the paints tend to tack up and dry a bit faster. Um, this can be a little bit problematic for some blending techniques and layering techniques, specifically with traditional watercolor techniques, um, as well as just simply uh, letting your paint sit on the palette for a while. And as you're working, it's, oh crap, it's starting to dry already. Now I gotta add more water and keep it wet. Uh, kind of harder to work with that way. So overall, I do actually really like these paints, but I think they work really well for me, specifically because I work quickly and I do big washy areas of color. I'm not sitting and doing more graphical stuff, and I think if I did, I probably wouldn't like them quite as much. If you are an artist that's on the go, I would say probably don't get these, because again, that, that reactivation thing, it, it's kind of, it's, it's tough. It makes them a little more challenging to work with. And watercolors are kind of supposed to be a little easier to work with rather than challenging. So do I recommend them? Yeah, a little, but not as your main go-to watercolor. Uh, these are, is what I say for a lot of products I review, a supplementary set. 
Uh, I wouldn't build an entire color palette with these, and I would not if you're new to watercolor. Don't start with these because they're, they're the working properties are just different enough that it probably doesn't give you a super accurate representation of what watercolor is and what it can do across different brands. I don't normally give things a star rating or anything like that, but I feel like the core watercolors are like a three out of five. They're, again, great, highly pigmented stuff. If you're working quickly doing big washes of color, they're perfect for you, especially if you're working straight out of the tube. If you're doing more illustrative stuff, might not be for you. But what about you guys? Have you tried Golden's core watercolors and what do you think of them? Or if you haven't tried them, has anything in this review maybe made you think, I want to try those, or hmm, maybe I should avoid those? Regardless of what you're thinking, though, let me know those thoughts in comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this or learned something. Get subscribed if you're not already. And this has been from Cinderblock Studios, reminding you to keep on creating, and I will see you guys next time. You know, my, my written review was a lot more positive, and then as soon as I worked with these for an hour, I was like, you know, i got to change some stuff, I think.